Hello everyone! This is the third episode of my Trans-Siberian Railway Travel mini-series, and today we will be exploring the Southern Ural region. If you have a hard time understanding my accent, this video has subtitles. Just click the three dots in the upper right, or CC button in the bottom right. Now that we are all set, let's continue from where we finished the last time. I boarded the night sleeping train in the city of Omsk and headed to the city of Kurgan. Trans-Siberian Railway passes through the territory of Kazakhstan, so although Russia has a transit agreement and there won't be any border control, it will still be an unpleasant night, as you'll be woken up a couple of times by a man with a dog, opening your cooper door and standing there in silence for a few seconds. 9 minutes past 7 am, I arrived at my destination and immediately rushed to the pedestrian bridge to catch a commuter train, which was departing two minutes later. The city of Kurgan does not have any particular points of interest. It is a very poor region, and it is at the bottom 5 of almost any rating, from the economic development to the drinking water quality. Its name itself provokes sadness, as it translates as Grave Hill. The reason I came here is that I found on the internet the strong evidence that one of the very few remaining old round faced trains is performing a regular service in the area and just could not resist the desire to see it in action again. That's why I rushed at the station. The train that was arriving could have been it. I was unlucky, but there still is even the better chance to catch it in the daylight. Also, as an enthusiastic traveler, I feel an aspiration to visit all of the 85 regions of my motherland Russia. The beauty is everywhere here, even in Kurgan. Poetry preserves it, and you can still find neat old Soviet street signs and beautiful wooden windows. The richest house in town was the one of Mikhail Naryshkin, a Russian army colonel who was expelled here for participating in the uprising against the Tsar in December 1825. And this is the last fancy house I've managed to spot for today. In the city you can even find log houses, among the idyllic landscapes that have probably never been changed since the electric poles appeared here. And of course, the whole town is surrounded by great Soviet concrete tower blocks. I was unlucky again. It was a regular train that was performing service from Kurgan to Shumiha today and was now arriving at the unnamed platform at the 2347th kilometer of the Trans-Siberian Railway. I was devastatingly disappointed. Suddenly all other achievements and experience of this trip have paled in comparison with my failure to see the round face train. But I quickly realized that as a drone pilot I am still able to do my best and slow speed of the train that was reduced due to the presence of railway walkers and tracks has rewarded me with one of the longest and smoothest railway aerial shootings that I have ever made.
Community trains operate here only a couple times per day, so a good old friend, Potato Movie Bus, is coming to pick me up and bring me back to the city. This small capacity passenger slash cargo all-terrain vehicle that is also extremely cheap has gained its success as an urban transport after the collapse of the Soviet Union, when the state was failing to provide both public transit service and paved city roads. We were riding all sorts of vehicles unsuited for the transport of passengers back then, including for example this miracle of technology, produced by the way in Kurgan. But let's get back to the railway. Kurgan is an important intersection of the different railways of the Ural region. Three of them have commuter trains circulating there. Main station has about 40 tracks and a locomotive depot. I've met some easily recognizable coaches of the Kazakhstan National Railway, and then joined my wife on a train proceeding from Novosibirsk to Chelyabinsk to make a family visit there. Unlike Kurgan, Chelyabinsk is a Ural city for real. A few dozen kilometers from the urban core, there are mountains with decent ski resorts. After spending some miserable time there, we headed to the town of Mias to catch an evening commuter train that will take us to a much more interesting place. My wife's grandmother's sister co-owns a private ski resort that is located at the slopes of the valley, where the historic route of the Trans-Siberian Railway crosses this part of Ural Mountains. They built it with their own hands in the 1960s, and even managed to negotiate a request staff for the computer trains there. This place is breathtaking. Two cozy wooden houses, strong railway and absolutely nothing else. From the top of the mountain you can see the bright lights of Mias, and in the morning the back side of the loop that the railway makes here. If you have traveled the Trans-Siberian, have you ever wondered what are those small buildings by the railway in the middle of nowhere? Well, now you know one more possible answer. It could be some family's private ski resort. 